So photosynthesis is actually really a two-stage process. And the clue is in the word photo, meaning light, and synthesis, meaning make. So the first part of photosynthesis is something called what we call the light dependent stage. And the second part of photosynthesis is something called the light independent stage. Now, in order to understand photosynthesis, we've really got to learn or recap a little bit about the structure of chloroplasts. They are a double membrane organelle, which means they have an inner and an outer uh, membrane, which together are referred to as the envelope. The inner membrane is highly folded into these things called thylakoids, and they are stacked up into things called grana. And then surrounding all these thylakoids is, is a fluid called the stroma. And you should be able to not only label a diagram of a chloroplast, but also an electron micrograph of a chloroplast. So let's go back to this two-step process. The light-dependent stage of photosynthesis takes place on these thylakoid membranes, and that's why there's so many of them packed inside a chloroplast. And the light-independent stage happens in the stroma. So let's look at this overall summary of the process before we get into the nitty gritty of these two stages of photosynthesis. What happens in the light dependent stage is that energy from the sun hits chlorophyll in the thylakoid membranes. Um, water is split, uh, which releases oxygen as a waste gas, but it also provides hydrogen ions which are used to make ATP and NADPH. These can then pass through to the second part of photosynthesis, the light independent stage. It doesn't require any light for this stage uh, to happen. The ATP and the NADPH are using something called the Calvin cycle. Now the Calvin cycle takes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. It uses the energy from ATP and NADPH to produce the glucose that we need from this whole process. So looking at the light dependent stage in more detail, um, we need to look at the thylakoid membrane. Now, if we zoom in on the thylakoid membrane, we can see that there are some structures. There are some things called photosystems, photosystem one and photosystem two, which is where we find the chlorophyll. And there are also some electron uh, carriers. Uh, and this is an electron transport chain, just like you will see in respiration. Um, these can pick up electrons and they can be passed along down energy levels. There is also an ATP synthase, just like what we saw again in um, chemiosmosis in respiration. So light is constantly traveling into the plant, into their cells and hitting photosystem one and photosystem two. Now you may be wondering why photosystem two is actually the first one in this chain here, but it's because photosystem one was discovered first and then they discovered photosystem two. So they've kept it in the order um, that they were discovered. That's how they're named. But it is actually where we're gonna, we're gonna start our journey at photosystem two. So a photon of light actually hits the chlorophyll uh, inside photosystem two and the chlorophyll starts vibrating and it, if enough, um, if it starts doing this enough, then that energy will be passed into its electron and that electron will be free, will, will become free from the chlorophyll molecule. And that excited electron moves up to this higher energy state. Um, it then gets passed down an electron transport chain, losing energy as it goes. And this energy is used to pump hydrogen ions uh, across from the stroma into the actual lumen of the thylakoids. In photosystem one, another photon needs to re-excite that electron. It's lost a lot of its energy now. And so we need more light um, to hit and re-excite that electron back up again to a higher energy state. It then gets eventually passed along down another sort of electron transport chain until it combines with something called NADP+. This is uh, um, an electron uh, acceptor and it's going to become reduced NADP or NADPH as it's also known. And we are going to need that in the second part of photosynthesis. Now, we have now lost an electron and it's very important that that electron is replaced. And the way we get that electron is to use the water. This is where the water comes in. That light is actually used to split water um, which is called photolysis. 
and that re replaces the electrons into photosystem 2 that were lost and that is where our oxygen waste gas comes from which is going to uh, diffuse out of the cell. It also adds some extra hydrogens into the lumen as well. Now these hydrogens have built up uh, a lot in the lumen and we have got an electrochemical gradient and so they're going to want to pass down the electrical chemical gradient and the way they do that is through ATP synthase and as they do that they can turn ADP and phosphates into ATP. So what we've done in the light dependent stage is that we have produced NADPH and we've produced ATP and they are both needed in the light independent stage later on in photosynthesis. Now the process that we've just talked through is more specifically known as non-cyclic photophosphorylation and it requires ADP and NADP plus for it to work. But at the end of a long day of sunlight the plant can actually become short in NADP plus uh, and there might still be a lot of sunlight coming in and in this case, it can actually switch to an alternative um, light dependent stage called cyclic photophosphorylation. Now, cyclic photophosphorylation actually starts just like non cyclic photophosphorylation did. Photon of light comes in, hits photosystem 2, excites the chlorophyll, electron moves up to a higher energy level, gets passed down um, the electron transport chain, pumping hydrogens into the lumen. But when it gets to photosystem 1, things become a little bit different because there isn't any NADP plus there um, for uh, that electron to be accepted. So that electron actually gets passed all the way back into photosystem two. It can then get re-excited and can get passed back along, uh, generate more hydrogen ions into the lumen, which can go, go through the ATP synthase and generate more ATP. So through cyclic phosphorus, photophosphorylation, we can continue to generate ATP in this way. We're not going to make any, any more NADPH, uh, but we're going to make lots more ATP. We also don't need water for this. We're not going to split water because we don't need to replace that electron in photosystem 2 because we're just recycling the same electron back from photosystem 1 to photosystem 2 over and over again. So what's going to happen next is the light independent stage of photosynthesis and that ATP and that NADPH can now go into something called the Calvin cycle. Now the Calvin cycle takes carbon dioxide uh, and it fixes that carbon dioxide um, into or organic molecules which will eventually make glucose.